Number 49, determine the mass of each of the following. All right, so we did a very similar question to this in number 47. So if you're new here, hi, thank you for joining. <laughs> but um, go back to number 47 if you want more practice or if you, you know, don't feel too comfortable. We go more in depth into that one, so this one will be a, will be a quick one, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so for these, we all want to find out the mass, right? And the mass will mean grams. So for each one, if I look down the list here, we have moles, 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 and moles. So in essence, we want to go from moles of something to the mass, the grams of that something. I just label X as something, but it could either be an element or a compound. And just know that how you're going to get there is one mole of anything always equals the molar mass in grams on the periodic table of that element or compound, all right? So a couple of things that I'm going to assume that you know how to do. You, know, you should know how to find a molar mass in grams by now. If you don't, there's tons of questions that I've done back, I think maybe starting at number question 42. So there's questions that help you find out molar mass. So I'm going to assume that we know how to do them. I'll do the first one, but then for B through E, I'll just do the quick can version. Okay, so let's just dive right in. So for A, we start with 2.345 moles of LiCl. So we're just converting. So anytime that we're converting, it's always times by the ratio. You put the unit that you don't want on the opposite side. So moles of LiCl will go on the bottom. And grams, because that's the mass, of LiCl will go on the top. Now, do we know a conversion between moles and grams? Well, yes, we do, right? It's this one. One mole of anything equals the molar mass um, on the periodic table of that element. So one mole of anything, the one always goes with the word mole. And in this case, you need to find out this number. This will be the molar mass, mm, which is on the periodic table, pt. So I'll just do the first one for you guys. How you should find out a molar mass is LiCl, right? You compartmentalize all of your elements. So you got lithium, you got chlorine, and now you say how many you have. So you have one lithium and one chlorine in lithium fluoride, and then you times them by their weights on the periodic table. So lithium's over here, chlorine's over here. So one times 6.94 would be the essentially the same number. And then chlorine would be 35.45, which would be the same number, 35.45. And then at the end, you just add it all up, and that would turn into your molar mass. Now, if you guys want to shorthand your numbers for your molar mass, so instead of lithium being 6.94 and you put 7, that's totally fine with me. Um, I'm just going to put the numbers that are on the periodic table here, but your answer should be very, very, very similar. So here, I get 42.39, and that's the number that goes here, 42.39. Cancel out moles of lithium chloride, LiCl, and now you just do the math. 2.345 times 42.39, and you need four sig figs, because there's four sig figs here. Sig figs are in chapter one if you guys want to review it. We've got tons of problems there for you. So this would be 99.40 grams of lithium chloride, LiCl. And that's the answer. Box that answer off. 99.40 grams of LiCl. Done with that one. Let's move on to B. I'll put B down here. We got some room. 0 0.0872 moles of acetylene, which is C2H2. So just like before, we're just converting. So times by that ratio, moles of C2H2 on the bottom, grams of C2H2 on the top, and we use the same relationship as we did before, right? This one over here. One mole, so one mole, goes with the molar mass from the periodic table of C2H2. So we're just taking carbon, which is over here, and hydrogen. 
So now I'm going to do the quick hand version. So it'd be 2 times 12.01, because there's two carbons, and there's two hydrogens, so 2 times 1.008. You add the two numbers up, you get 26.038. Oop, 0 0.036. Cancel out moles of ethylene, and now you get your answer. So 0 0.0872 times the molar mass, and we need three sig figs, because out of this whole thing there's only three sig figs, so it'd be 2.27. 2.27 grams of C2H2, and that's the answer that goes here. 2.27 grams of C2H2. Check that one off. Moving on, I'm going to erase these. What do you think, guys? I'm going at a little faster pace, but if you guys feel that this is too fast, go to the um, other questions that are before this. There's tons of problems. I know you got this. All right, let's keep going. C, 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of Na2CO3. So converting times by that ratio, moles of Na2CO3 on the bottom, sodium carbonate, grams of Na2CO3 up top, and what is the uh, conversion that we're going to use? This one, right? One mole of anything equals the molar mass in grams. So one mole equals the molar mass in grams. we got to find that on the periodic table. So Na2CO3, we're using sodium, which is over here, Sodium, carbon, and oxygen, which is over here. All right, so let's get down to it. 2 times 22.99 plus, we have just one carbon, so 12.01, plus 3 times 16, and you get 105.99. 105.99, cancel out moles. That's your answer. Look how easy peasy these, these are, guys, right? 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative second times 105.99. We need two sig figs because this had two sig figs, so 3.5 grams of Na2CO3. 3.5 grams Na2CO3. Done with that one. On to the next one. D. I got some room here. 1.23 times 10 to the to the ooh to the third moles of fructose, which is the sugar that's found in fruits. Times by mole of C6H12O6 goes on the bottom and grams of C6H12 O6 goes on the top, and we know from before, one mole of anything always equals the molar mass. So this number, the gram number, is always on the periodic table. So C6H12O6, so we're using carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So we got 6 times 12.01 plus 12 times 1.008 plus 6 times 16, so I get 180 point, whoop, I always do that, that's okay. I get 180.156. The units cancel, and you're left with the answer. 1.23 times 10 to the third, that's a lot of moles, times 180.156. Your answer should have three sig figs, so your answer should have 2.22 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th grams of C6H12O6. That's the answer to this one, 2.22 times 10 to the 5th grams of C6H12O6. Whew. Last but not least, let's erase it. And let's do it. 
But do you guys, do you see a similar pattern? It's basically the same thing, but every single one, you just got to find the different molar mass. So this is just testing your skills on if you can find a molar mass and just do the calculation properly. But this is super important. E, 0 0.5758 moles of FeSO4 H2O7. Okay, so times by the ratio, moles of FeSO4 H2O7 on the bottom, grams of FeSO4 H2O7. And now we're using the information that we found out before, right? One mole of anything equals the molar mass. So you still got to find this on the periodic table. This one is probably the most scary because there's a lot of different things going on here. But if you just go from left to right, you will get the correct molar mass. So we're dealing with iron, which is over here, Fe, sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen. And then there's another oxygen, but it's the same thing. So if we work from left to right, we should do 55.85, because that's iron, plus there's one sulfur, so 32.06, plus there's four oxygens in the first shot, so four times 16, plus now there's how many hydrogens? There's two, just write this down, there's two here, but parentheses with a subscript next to it distributes by multiplication to all of them. So you really have 14 hydrogens, 2 times 7. So 14 times 1.008. And now you have 7 more oxygens, so 7 times 16. So this one is, right in a different color, 278.022. But still, the units, moles, cancel out, and then we just do the math. So 0.5758 times the molar mass, and we should have four sig figs, so it's 160.1 grams of FeSO4 H2O7, and I'll just put that over here, 160.1 grams FeSO4 H2O7. Seven. Check that off. That's the answer to these five. This was fun. All right. Hopefully this helped you guys out. Let me know in the comments. Love to hear from you guys. Um, I want to see how you guys are doing. And thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to help us out, please hit that subscribe button. We put out tons of content daily, free answers for you guys every single day. That's good for you, right? Especially if you're doing all OpenStax textbooks. We got you covered. All right? Thank you so much. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I'll see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.